It's the last leg of the midweek daily rundown on Channel 7. I'm Dan Morfitt and even I don't know what's going to happen next because it's time to look at some of the more unusual stories that have been making the news. And if they're a load of rubbish, we can blame producer <laughs> Jack. I haven't seen these. They could be absolutely awful. Right. Now, we've heard about Lego houses, but have we heard of a Lego cathedral? Ed Sheeran, eat your heart out. Durham Cathedral has completed a Lego, mo Lego model of the 17th century building, and the final, place, uh, the final brick was placed yesterday morning, and we've got some pictures of this. This is gonna be <gasps> amazing! The model contains 3,000 Lego bricks and took three years, man alive! That's ridiculous. Took three years to complete. It was built following donations by visitors who paid one pound. This is shockingly amazing. One pound for each brick and the model raised funds for 10.9 million pounds worth of exhibition of cathedral artifacts called Open Treasure. That's amazing! Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the, on on Facebook when they like when, when it was shown off, um, you could do a 360 degree like look from the inside of it, so you could just look around and, and see what's going on. And do you know what Durham Cathedral is really famous for? It's knocker. Ah. It's got a really famous knocker, and I remember seeing one of them made in Lego years ago. Really? And that was so they've always been working with Lego. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Durham, have you ever been to Durham Cathedral I in the flesh? No. It's one of the most beguiling, gorgeous, mm. interesting buildings. And if you go. Uh, towards the uh, university and across the river, there's a bridge that you can go on, which is a bit like an Indiana Jones bridge. And <laughs> the, the, you know, like a bridge, yeah. yeah like um, a bridge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a view of Durham Cathedral from there, which is amazing. I think if they manage to replicate the kind of beautiful stained glass cathedral look without it looking rubbish, that's amazing. That is, yeah. uh, I'm going to be checking out more of those pictures because yeah. I, I want to see if people put in like little Simpsons characters in there <laughs> and a Lego Batman. <laughs> uh, what out. would you like to see a Lego model of if there's one building that you'd like to see represented? You can do so much with Lego. Um, That's, you, I wish we'd been told about this question before. <laughs> you, could, you could build anything with Lego. I don't know. What's the, anything what's in your imagination building? or in real life? Oh, okay. Um, a marshmallow. <laughs> a marshmallow Lego piece. Okay, Cal. Just a square load of wooden white blocks. Um, wooden? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Uh, something. Oh, we're in Manchester. The Hilton in Manchester. Oh, the the the, the big building. That's a good shout with uh, the Cloud Twenty Three by. Yeah, that would be through. great. Manchester. Oh, and you could have cocktails down it. Right. Uh, <laughs> let's look at our next story. It's the app that just keeps on giving. It is. Oh, come on, go. Two Canadian teenagers were so engrossed in the game that they crossed the border into America without realising it. The two teens were detained by Border Patrol agents until their mothers could <laughs> come and collect them. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm just walking across. Hi, I'm in America now. Uh, can we go a day without a Pokemon Go story? No. I don't think we can when they're as good as that. No, that's amazing. How do you wait? How do you walk? What were the security guards doing? <laughs> what were the border guards doing? Playing Pokemon Go. Were they Go. playing Pokemon Go as well? <laughs> oh look, there's a Jigglypuff in a different country entirely. <laughs> I think we'll go to that Pokemon gym. Why? <laughs> because it's there in America. Was it data, did, what sort of data recovery plans do they have that you can go to another country and That's why it? the mum probably came to pick yeah. them up to give them a smack Huge around the lungs. phone bill. <laughs> right. Let's go to our next story. San Diego <laughs> Comic Con has happened over the weekend and the annual gathering of us brilliant nerds brought with it a whole bundle of trailers for yet more superhero movies. But one stood out in particular, the brilliant Wonder Woman. For the first time in her 75 years as a character, Wonder Woman will hit the big screens and be the first standalone female superhero movie. <gasps> Is it about time that yeah. we're finally yeah. getting a superhero <laughs> movie about a woman? Yeah. Are we finally yes. happy about this? Absolutely. Because it's too Clearly. long, isn't it? Yeah, and it does actually look amazing. It does. Um, the director is a woman, I believe. Yeah. Um, and it's actually going to be funny. And the fact that she was in a certain other movie and then wasn't mentioned in the title yeah. or was barely mm. in it. Batman was... versus Superman. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought at and first, someone else. Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. It's like, hang on, her name's Diana. Uh, <laughs> not Dawn. I thought we were getting confused there. But yeah. Wonder Woman looks good. <laughs> what? That that was a good bad guy. Um, no, Wonder, Wonder Woman looks great. Yeah. The weird thing about the trailer, if you've not seen it yet, please do. It's really good. Oh, the good. first thing is her first line is, "You're a man." Yeah. That's a great first line. <laughs> oh, and I didn't even notice. Yeah. 
You're a man. So, uh, finally happening. Are you finally happy about this? I'm so happy about it. Next step, Black Widow movie. Yes. Please. Please. And got... Joss Whedon has said he wants to make a Black Widow film. Yeah, but yeah. they've been saying that for years. We have so got Captain Marvel, Can though. you make it now? Yeah, we do have Captain yeah, Marvel. Yeah, that's Brie true. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like it's happening, stuff. clearly. Yeah. It's all very exciting. It We're is. all very excited here at the Daily Both Rundown. sides have one film of a woman leading it. That's good, isn't it? We need more than <laughs> we that. We need more than that. <laughs> we need four. We could call it Ghostbusters. <laughs> right. An official campaign has been launched to get Yorkshire its very own emoji. Come on. Teaming up with broadband <laughs> provider PlusNet to create five possible emojis for the country's, uh, for the county's annual Yorkshire Day on August the 1st. These include a white rose, a Yorkshire terrier, a flat cap, a teapot, and of course, an emoji Yorkshire pudding. Now, uh, would you like to see this? Would you like to see Yorkshire have its own emojis? Separate to this, and this is gonna sound ridiculous, everyone. Um, I've just realized that Yorkshire puddings are called that because they come from Yorkshire. What did you think they were called? I don't know, I, th I thought it was just a name. What, just now? Just now, just right then. Really? Yeah, that's the first time I realized it. <laughs> I clicked in my head, that's the first time ever. That's, that's so beautiful for you. <laughs> say that to and us right now. You know Yorkshire tea? No way. Well, no. the thing oh, about Yorkshire tea... This is too much. It's you know, it comes from Blackpool. Do you know oh, what? Okay. You should have a fat rascal. Sorry? A fat rascal. <laughs> Betty's of York, the tea rooms, do this uh, scone called a fat rascal. Okay. It's Betty's of Harrogate, sorry. Right. It's the most beautiful thing you've ever put in your mouth. It is amazing. <laughs> Would you like to see an emoji for your hometown? <laughs> London. Uh, there is one. already an emoji I've for got, London. Got a few. I'm yeah. all good. The Yorkshire ones sound pretty neat. I love emojis. Yeah. I'm on board. Yeah, emojis the, are great. The emoji for London is just a syringe. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I've been told that Liverpool would have a balaclava or four car tyres, but uh, <laughs> that's for Liverpool. And finally, what's the best thing you've ever won in a raffle? A box of chocolates? Maybe a bottle of champagne? How about a tropical island. One man from Australia was over the moon when his ticket was drawn in a raffle to win a tropical island just off the coast of Papua New Guinea. The raffle tickets cost £37 and was put up by the couple who owned the island who wanted to move back to Australia. What do you think about that? What's wrong with the island? That you want yeah. to put up a raffle to move back to Australia, we've got all these deadly creatures. That's a double whammy of not only slagging off the own island that you own, <laughs> but slagging off Australia. Why would you want to move no, back no, no, there? No, not in that way, but like they've got these deadly creatures. What's on your island that's worse than that? E even, even deadlier creatures probably. Probably, on exactly. Scary. Probably rats. I wouldn't, I wouldn't move there to that island. £37, would you spend that on a raffle ticket to win a desert island of your own? Yes, I would. <laughs> I am not as, as uh, smart and questioning as you. I would think, whoa, I want an island. My orders from the universe have come back to me. Yeah, That's yours is a cynical think. reaction. Very What's cynical. wrong with it? <laughs> yours is a beautiful reaction going, I own an island. Good My things happen. My very own island. I think that's nice. I'd have some questions. <laughs> how, how do they get their shopping? For a start. You're thinking of all the negatives. Uh, well, you you're think of when you're moving to an island, a, a I, desert island, I will, I will, I will sort out an island for you in the middle of the Manchester <laughs> Ship Canal. <laughs> and you can work out what's wrong with that. <laughs> right, that's another daily rundown done and dusted. We have solved all of the world's problems in just 90 minutes. Give yourself a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> Thanks to my guests this evening, Carl Doughty and Maddie Howard and also our brilliant musical guest, Don Major, and his songwriting circle. That was fantastic. I'm back tomorrow for the last daily rundown of the week, but from me, producer Jack, in the gallery, and everybody here, it's a very, very good night. Good night. Let's clap out.